back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here today with an exciting conversion for you. I I know I haven't hit you with a lot of conversion stuff or tutorials in a while or anything kind of you know exciting and just like oh hey look at that you know that's kind of what this the blog was was built on was to basically help me stay on track with all my conversions and I had it was such a magical time for me I had all this like to me it was amazing conversions you know like I had a fully converted um, orc army it was like looted guard and that was super exciting and you know I just I did all this stuff and I came up with all these ideas and, and it was and it was really great because I was sharing all that with the world and it was helping to keep me on track with the blog and then when it became more of a commercial thing for the you know the retail side of, of what I was doing with the game store and the mail order and the bits and everything it became more of a drag I'll be honest um you know but I I've been doing it for nine years now and you know it's 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 not, not I guess it's been about seven years seven years this fall but you know that, that being said you know, when you do something every day it just kind of starts becoming uh, you know it, it's either becomes a chore or it becomes something you enjoy and and you know it I won't lie it has been it has been a chore as of the past couple of years but you know we're getting to a place where we're really um, starting to starting to come up with a lot of cool new content you know we're able to do that with the support that we're getting from a lot of people on patreon and we're also able to just kind of you know with all the stuff coming out just look let the mind go crazy and just do all this stuff. So I did this uh, conversion recently. It's a little kind of like Cylon Raider kind of thing for uh, the Necrons. It's kind of like, it's a very simple conversion. It's just a Tomb Blade basically like repositioned and repurposed. And um, you know, it, it was really exciting and, and it looks cool. You know, when you compare it to the box where you see these guys and they're, you know, they're circular kind of thing. And then you see this guy and he's just like this sweet ass jet bike. It's not like this, this dude hunched over basically with his face socketed into a dildo here. Get it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's just, that's just silly. I, I, I mean, it's cool. It's a great looking model, but I mean, I, th I prefer this right here. Like this thing just kind of type deal. And it, you know, drilled it out. It got a little room for the flight stand here because it's all repurposed in the center of gravity's all changed and everything. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing a commission of these actually. That buddy of mine was like, Hey, I want to, I want a different looking, um, tomb blade. And I'm like, I got you dog. <laughs> this is what, this is what we came up with. And I think it, you know, I think it looks really good and it's really got the juices flowing here. It's really got me wanting to work on a lot more of my stuff, which I feel like will, will benefit everybody. You know, uh, showing off show, showcasing some of my some of the madness just kind of coming out and, and, and doing and getting that all on videotape and and showing people all this stuff that that inspires me and and you know my hobby pipe dreams and that's that's really what I want to get to get to in the next couple of months here on the channel so I'm really blessed that I'm able to share you know this the start off hopefully something bigger you know conversion wise with you guys here um, starting with this conversion so we're gonna jump into it I'm gonna show you how to uh, re reposition and repurpose and what parts you even need. you don't even need all the parts to do this and how to make this little this little tomb blade conversion right here so you can um, knock them out for your army as well all you really need besides the kit is some uh, some spare heads that are, aren't this like kind of socket eyeball thing right there but before we get into all that we got to pay the bills please click on the patreon link up in the top left corner that's your way to help us stay ad free in 2016 and score yourself some great swag right now i think we're giving away some death watch miniatures over there uh, so check that out please help support what we do here the hobby features the hobby tutorials all of the stuff we do 20 videos ish a month and uh, you know it's i I, I put a lot of time and effort to them and we're really ramping up. We got a new schedule coming out with, we're doing a 40k flashback. We're going to be doing battle reports, Armada and X-Wing, the top down, in the mind of a tournament player kind of style, ported over from Long War, but kind of, uh, you know, with a spiky bits twist on it there. And, you know, our normal unboxings, our normal white dwarfs, and hopefully one extra unboxing feature a week, because that's right there, that's five videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh you know it's it's an ongoing process here it's a really exciting time and I'm, I'm super stoked I'm super energized to really get this stuff done and get this content made and you know just kind of let my mind wander and just just help the the the, the site become uh, a way to focus my hobby activities and also you know reward everybody out there with you know the the, the content and the I guess know-how 
uh, for for everybody instead of just me one person just doing this and hey, you know I'm not sharing it with anybody I'm like hey, grinning myself <laughs> yeah at least everybody out there gets a little a little a little piece of it a little inspiration to take home and put or some tips and tricks to put in their hobby arsenal and that's what it's all about if I can enrich the hobby in that in that way I'm I'm all about it so you know hit it hit us subscribe for us here on this channel check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more become a veteran of the long war today and now we're going right into the feature pew, 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 pew. All right, it's hobby time. So right here is a good look at the conversion itself. It's kind of that stretched out, I guess, I wouldn't exactly say squat, but more, I guess, uh, aerodynamically minded kind of a jet bike conversion that we've come to see from like the Space Marines or even, you know, the Eldar themselves. So it's more conventional kind of shape, not that uh, kind of spherical, bore buzz kind of blade kind of thing that's that the actual tomb blade kit and depicted there on the box set you can kind of see uh at actual size it's quite different you know it, it looks the same and people are like yo is that the same but nah it's it's different so let's jump right into the guide itself so here's the parts that you're going to need and they're almost in, all entirely included in the box set just depending on what you want to do about the head so you got the left and right halves of the chassis the gun the rider the wing bit then you've got kind of like the armor plate kind of thing and then there's the head itself which normally sockets into the nebula scope but what i did was i had some extra heads from the tomb guard or tomb blade lich guard or excuse me the lich guard box and that you can see right there in a little bit better detail on the actual box itself what it's going to look like so it's going to look a little bit more stylish so jumping right into the actual tutorial first up you're going to cut down that whole nebula scope kind of uh inside piece now it's only attached to one of the halves of the chassis so it's actually pretty easy to snip off get in there with your knife kind of trim it down these parts i already had uh you know pre-flashed um pre-deflashed and kind of ready to go for the most part there's a couple spots when I, when i was going to do the tutorial i was like oh better, better handle that real quick but for the most part it was all staged and ready to go um you know i had them in a little baggie and that's that's a good thing about assembly line kind of thing you, you can do the same thing just cut out all the pieces put them in a baggie so you can come back and you know on your next pass you start putting everything together Another important thing to trim down is the back of the rider, where it's supposed to socket into that part that we just took off. You're just going to want to basically just plane that whole section right off so he sits in the new chassis a lot better at the angle that we want him to. So then from there, it's just kind of plug and play. Grab out your tester's plastic glue or whatever you know glue you're comfortable with. I, I prefer the testers, I think it's good stuff. And I kind of get in there, get it all around all the parts up into the very tip of the front extended chassis bit. And then I'm gonna take the other half and I'm just gonna kind of lock it in and very carefully so that the glue doesn't kind of squirt all over the place. Now there is, you're gonna see that seam line all around the, the rib, the kind of spine of the the crescent shape there which is not that big of a deal you can go and hit it with some plastic putty if you're worried about it i didn't for this tutorial but i may go back at some point and do it and then just building up the riders super easy you're just gonna apply some glue you know this is like the easiest thing in the history of ever just the glue front halves of the torsos then you're gonna slot in the legs and the arms are kind of where it gets a little tricky because for this conversion it doesn't exactly kind of socket into the control panel in the front of the jet bike itself but this part right here you know i kind of sped it up it's this is super easy stuff like it's just it's just assembly 101 for the most part you know what i mean so just socketing everything in making sure it's glued making sure it's on right and then the tricky part comes when you, you glue the left and right arms on, but then you have to glue the wrist pieces on. And the wrist pieces are kind of um, kind of on this like um, kind of uh, trackball kind of mouse kind of thing that is supposed to lock into the front control panel. So it's a little bit pain in the butt to actually get together right. So I use a little dab of plastic glue and then I kind of attach it very carefully. And I kind of let him uh, clasp the two hands together kind of like he's a you know a, 
a, clam a clampy monkey, a clappy monkey kind of type thing. And I just kind of let it set because that's basically how it's going to set on the jet bike itself. But, you know, right here you can kind of see he's he's almost lined up and I'm just doing some some fine some finite adjustments just to get it just right and that's basically how it's gonna look on the conversion so it kinda looks like there's like these two kind of uh, melon halves that he's basically holding on to so at this point all you have to do is attach the head which is super easy in and of itself I'm gonna grab that alternate head I was telling you about from the lich guard box and just slap it on there easy peasy so now I'm gonna set that guy aside to dry up because I want those, I want some tension in those arms. So when I go to attach him to the actual uh, jet bike, he's good to go. The, I kind of built everything in stages because I knew I to give everything a certain amount of drying time because I knew there was other parts to it, you know, going forward that I would want it a little bit more uh, strong to handle the stresses I was going to put on it. So now we're going to drill into the actual chassis itself and we're going to use a 332nd bit for the stand the, the you know flying stand and a 1 8 bit for the wing support uh, kind of strut type things so it's uh, I give you this measurements you know you can use a pin bias or you can use a drill I kind of used a drill it's really easy we've we've shown you that stuff in the past here you know on on the channel um, so basically the big thing right here is angling your stand just right because you kind of see there I kind of tip the crescent forward but I'm kind of going perpendicular up into it with the drill bit and that's basically how you want it and so you're kind of drilling out the existing hole for the stand but you're doing it at a different angle and you can kind of see here once I attach the stand it, it lays flat it holds the support it's kind of like a center of gravity bumblebee kind of thing and there you see it right there you're like oh okay I kind of see because the way it's going to be angled is a little bit different from the tomb blade angle which you know Games Workshop intended when they were doing all their designs and everything so I'm just here I'm just kind of like checking all my uh, measurements and things now I'm going to switch out the drill bit to the 1 8 drill bit and I'm going to get in there in the thruster engine area and just kind of go to town on it I'm just going to drill it out really quick with that 1 8 inch drill bit because the struts actually going to fit right in there um, we've done this thing a million times in the past you know just hold your pieces correctly don't apply a whole lot of crazy pressure you know don't drill through the part into your hand be very careful obviously wear eye protection etc etc i.e don't be a stupid so there you can see where the struts gonna attach into the part itself uh, this is very easy i measured it out it should fit just right so i'm going to hit it with some plastic glue up in there and just attach the strut piece in and the trick here is to allow an adequate amount of drying time and that's why we have switched to this step here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the left and the right strut uh, in here which you're seeing right now and then we're going to add some pieces to the front uh, the weapon uh, support structure and then we're just going to kind of let it set and kind of hold its get its angle under its own weight right there which you can kind of see and then there's a control panel piece that's going to go on it there's the weapon mounts themselves and there's a little like uh, spherical piece that you got to glue on it's kind of like a two-part de type deal so i'll take care of that right there the whole time the other piece is drying and giving that extra strength to those wing supports that we're going to need here uh in a couple steps down the road but i want I want all these to line up and I don't want it to look wonky like one wing up in the air and the other wing down you know kind of type thing so that's why we're doing this right now and there you can kind of see that it's gonna line up and we'll set it down under its own weight and I kind of line it up just right and then I'm gonna set it down next to the whole project so I can keep an eye on it now we're just doing some some manual labor basically just gonna glue together the two halves of the guns now the guns actually don't put the focusing nozzle kind of tip things on because I think it looks more I think it looks fresher without those like I kind of like the um, stark angles like the the 45s and the 60s to this whole conversion and I felt like when I put the nozzle uh, the the focusing nozzle or the tip onto the guns it kind of took away from it because it's a little rounded so that's just a kind of a personal preference Throw them on there if you like. Use different guns if you like. You know what I mean? Because the tomb blades are pretty much at the point where they're, they're completely interchangeable. You can use whatever gun on there and say it is what it is. At some point, you know, you're kind of going overboard with the whole WYSIWYG thing. So there I grab my assembly again. 
I'm going to take that armor plate and pop it in there. Now, I'm not gluing it down because I'm going to go back and airbrush it. And I want to airbrush that a different color. And it's actually designed so you don't have to do that. So I just kind of sock it in. It's all dry fitted here. I'm going to dry fit the pilot on top. And remember, I was telling you those two like uh, kind of uh, spherical uh, rollerball things in his hands. Those are going to lock over the control area in the front. So all of this is dry fit. I haven't glued anything in. And I probably will only loosely glue it in after it's painted I probably won't even glue the pilot in and now we got to put the foot plate uh, part in and I forgot to take the little nub off there so I'm going to do that in the middle of this tutorial <laughs> but once that's done uh, you just kind of find a spot for it and kind of glue it in you'll kind of figure out where it goes based on once you see the pilot it'll kind of it all become clear like where it should attach to now it's going to it's going to pop off a couple of times it literally always does because there's you know some tension between the pilot and shifting around and it just takes a minute for it to kind of get that tackiness it needs to kind of stay in place but the whole time you can work on some other parts like putting in uh, the control fairing which you're gonna see right here and you, you can still see the hands right there they're kind of splitting the control area and then once this goes over top of it you're gonna see it kind of hides the the kind of rollerball hands right there and kind of all brings the the conversion together the foot plate <laughs> popped off again like I said that's just gonna happen because there's a lot of tensions involved it's it's really no big deal just pop it on there eventually it will stay now as you knock these out because you can get through to a box you're gonna do them in assembly line formation so or fashion or at least I recommend that way so you're gonna have it sitting next to you so you can check your angles you know just kind of pick it up sporadically like I'm doing right here um, to check you know and make sure everything's looking good and you can't really tell there's actually a, a time lapse between some of these clips like where I just picked it up there was about 10 minute time lapse so it's all starting to dry as I'm working with it but that represents me going to another model spending 10 minutes on that model and working my way back through the line so here I'm just adding a couple dabs of glue on the front weapon mounts which you see right there and there's the weapon mounts and now you kind of might see why I left those front focusing nozzles off because you can kind of see all of the the kind of angles kind of come together with the way that the front uh, weapons kind of look so I kind of put them in there at like a 45 kind of cantered at a little bit like that kind of staggered pattern and now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the back winglets and I wanted to put a little bit more glue on there because I want it to spread out. And I want it to get a nice good bond and I'm, I'm dabbing it off with the paper towel to make it a little bit tackier just to give it that extra uh, few minutes of bonding time right off the bat. And remember the, the when you attach the wings, the little support kind of uh, uh, support bracket goes on the bottom there. You can see a little bit easier from that angle. And then once you pop those on there, because it's so tacky, it's going to basically form a quick bond, but it's not super strong. This stuff takes like eight hours to set. So I'm going to set it down. I'm going to let gravity do its trick, but also the tension from the parts should kind of spring it back together and form this like equilibrium as I kind of just do some minor adjustments with the weapons and the wings. You can kind of see from this top down view that it's, it's really starting to kind of come together. And I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. And as you do yours in assembly line fashion, you know, and you can see there I'm, I'm pointing at the, <laughs> I'm pointing at the big crack in it. You can fill that with Vallejo plastic putty if you want. Um, you know, it may or may not show up, show up to, depending on what kind of paint scheme you're doing. So I'm just gonna let it sit there, keep an eye on it as it dries, and make sure it doesn't dry all wonky and it's good to go. So uh, just doing some some minor detail work. And uh, you know, this is a nice little conversion for the kit. You don't really have to add a lot of different parts. It's just kind of like a reconfiguration or a kit bash. And there you can see from the isometric angle, it's uh, it's very striking, I feel like, you know, and it's something that, that will look good on the tabletop. Um, it's just that extra something that looks pretty dope. And here's a new thing we're doing here, a little 360 kind of view. I throw it on the, the little uh, rotator thing and just kind of film it, get some good angles and some lighting and just uh, go to town and you can kind of see all the angles kind of work together. There's a very, there's not a whole lot of, uh, I guess, uh, rounded angles. It's more sharp, contrasted, stark angles, except for that big uh, crescent spire in the back, which is, you know, pretty much the Necron design in and of itself. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed my tutorial on how to convert your Tomb Blade. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today 
and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.